All right, in this video, we're going to talk about finding all the zeros of a polynomial. And uh, we're going to talk about factoring by grouping in this particular case. Now, understand, clean up this mess here. When we're talking about finding the zeros of a polynomial, um, one of the ways of thinking about it is x-intercepts. So, you know, say if I have um, some sort of a polynomial, say if it's some sort of a cubic polynomial. Okay, and um, so let's say if it's doing its n shape, then uh, the zeros of the polynomial will be the x-intercepts. And there will often be three, but there could be fewer you know, just depending on exactly how it fell. All right, I could make one that did something more like this. Okay, so there could be three, or there could be one, or there could be two. Um, there's gonna be one, for sure. Um, but anyway, x-intercepts. So, one of the ways that we can find those x-intercepts is by factoring if it's factorable. Now, when I see four terms, the first thing I think about is grouping, especially when I see a nice pattern. Do you see the x plus 5 here? And do you see another x plus 5 there? So grouping works like this. <clears throat> and you should always take a look at it when you have one, two, three, four terms, especially if, if you see something similar in the groups. Um, in this first pair, there's a common factor of x squared. So what I would do is I would pull that x squared out front. And then if I pull out that GCF, that's going to leave behind x plus 5. Now over here, it's already x plus 5. So I could just write that down, x plus 5. Uh, but it would be helpful if I just imagine the invisible 1 that's in front of everything. All right, think of this as 1 times x plus 5. All right, so you can see the x plus 5 and another x plus 5. That's the key to the grouping method, is there has to be a second common factor, a common you know, binomial or something. Uh, if there is, you can factor that out. So I can take this x plus 5 and factor it out. I can undistribute it, pull it out front. And of course, that's going to leave behind the blue stuff. So that's going to leave behind x squared plus 1. OK, so I have now factored this polynomial. So you know I have f of x. This is equivalent. But now I'm in a position to find the zeros, because if I set these factors equal to 0 and solve, that's how you get the zeros. So that's what I'm going to do. If I take x plus 5 and set that equal to 0. Obviously, um, in that case, I'm just subtracting 5 from both sides. So that's giving me x equals negative 5. OK, that's one of my zeros. Now, if I take this one and set that equal to 0, so if I go x squared plus 1 equals 0, um, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides minus 1 minus 1. So that will give me x squared is equal to negative 1. Now I could take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus whenever you take the square root of both sides. Um, that's going, going to now give me x, all right? The, the square root unsquares this. Uh, but the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is just plus, whoops, don't know what happened there. But um, that's going to give me plus or minus i. OK, now notice something here. If the, the degree is 3, that means there will be a maximum of three zeros, all right? A maximum of three roots. And uh, so if I find three, then I know I have them all for sure. And so here they are. There's two right here, positive i, negative i. 
and then the third one is negative 5. So that's it.